Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Ember series. And today we're going to talk about the Ember data. But before we're doing that, let's make our web app to more like a real app which can interact with the backend server. So, the things we're going to do here is to change the way we fetch the data. So, remember we have a data folder and then we output all this information through JavaScript object. What we're going to change in here is move this into the public API JSON file. So let's copy this and create a file called API slash items.json. Then let's put everything under this JSON file. So let's go to the index route. Instead of return a fixed JavaScript object, we're going to use the fetch function here. And since our JSON file is in the public folder, our public API endpoint will be slash API slash items dot JSON. And then we can, because this is a synchronous call, we need to change our model to a synchronous function. So let's normalize the response and try to, trying to console log it to see what's happened. After save it, let's run our app. So let's open the console. And you will see an array which contain two product item details in here. So let's remove this and pass the data back to the model and remove this one. After save it, you can see everything's still the same. So let's try to move this logic into the item details page as well. So let's copy this, go to the item route. Then we need to change the model to the asynchronized function. Then we need to find a specific product from the data we given and save it. You can see it still works as expected. And let's go to another product. It still looks good. So let's remove this line. As you can see here, the item and the index page share the same data. And then if you look at the item.json, these two object has the identical structure. So this is where the Ember data comes in. Ember data is built around the idea of organizing your app's data into model objects. These objects represent units of information that our application represents to the user. So the product data that we've been working on right now, it's a very good candidate. So let's go back to our app and create an Ember data model. Let's do Ember G model. So let's call product. And let's go into the model slash product. So the current structure here is that our product model extends the base class of the Ember data model. And let's put our items.json and the product.js side by side to see what we have in here. So we have a uh, ID, name, description, price, features, and colors. So we need to create those attributes by adding the attribute annotation. So let's import the attribute here. And we do add attribute ID. And then followed by the name, description, price, features, and colors. Besides, the attributes declared with the add attribute declarator work with the auto tracking features, which means you don't have to create a, a new class to mark all this as a track. It's exactly the same with the add track. All right, and now we have our model set up. It's time to refactor our route handler to use Ember data. Here we need to introduce a Ember service, which is the Ember data store. So this service is coming with the Ember data and it provides the find and the find all methods to loading records. So here we replace the fetch with find all. The data will equal to this store, find all product. Since this is the asynchronous call, we need to add a wait before this here. After save it, let's run our app. After fresh, the app crashed. You can see here, the get slash products returns 404. So let's change our API from the API slash items to the products. But after refresh, it still returns 404. So Ember doesn't really know where to get the correct data. 
So we have to teach them. The way to do that is to leverage adapter and also the serializer. Adapters helps you to define how and where to get those information from the server. So after you get the response to the client side, that you need the serializer to convert those response or reformat it a way that we can recognize to our app. So let's create adapters and also serializer for our application. So we do ember g adapter application. So the reason we create the adapt call application because for this simple app, we wanted to have a adapter to manage all the API call throughout the whole application. Then we need to create a serializer. Ember G serializer application. So let's go into the adapter slash application.js. So the first thing we're going to do here is to overwrite the build URL function, which we will add the add JSON at the end. And then we'll need to change the JSON API adapter to the REST adapter. Because we assume we're going to use the RESTly API. And then we need to change the serializer to the REST serializer as well. After save it, we need to look at the product.json. So we need to change the data to the products. The reason for that is to telling the Ember data that this array containing the data which it's using the product model. So let's run our app. So refresh. You can see this is still 404, but it's trying to fetch the products.json instead of just the slash products. And the reason we cannot find anything is because our endpoint edge is actually API slash products. So let's go back to the adapter and add the namespace in here. So our namespace is the API. So after that, the error is gone, but we have some new issues. So you may not set the ID as attribute on your model. So what we're gonna do here is to go back to the product model and remove the ID. And then you can see we're getting the data. Everything works fine. Now let's do a similar stuff for the index page. We import the service and then inject the store. After save it, everything worked as expected. That's pretty much about this tutorial. Hit like button if you like it, subscribe if you want more. Let me know what kind of things you want me to talk about with the Ember test in the comment section down below. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk about the Ember testing. See you next time.